Hello, sixth graders. With this video, we're going to have another go around practicing drawing with one point perspective. Before, you used one point perspective to draw some three dimensional letters, a box, and a weird shape. This time, we're going to draw a building, okay? So, I just want you to follow along with me. And also, you know, you can pause this video. You can uh, try things out on your own and then come back to the video. However, it works best for you to do this, okay? You don't have to do it all in one shot. We're going to start out with a horizon line. And the horizon line is going to be not quite in the middle of the paper and not all the way down at the bottom either. And I'm, I'm having my paper oriented like this because um, it just works with the camera angles a little bit better. So have your horizon line somewhere down here and then it goes straight across. It's not all wonky this way or wonky that way. Straight across. And then draw a line across. I want to stress that um, with drawing with one point perspective when, we're, when you're doing lines with rulers it's uh, really pretty important to try to make your lines really neat and straight. Um, when they get all uh, messed up or sloppy looking it starts to get really confusing where lines are or where they're supposed to go. Okay, And then with this um, drawing we're gonna have a vanishing point way over here on the side of the paper. You know we actually get to decide where we put the vanishing point but for this drawing we're gonna put it over here okay then we're gonna draw a big building right here it's gonna be a multi layered multi tiered uh, building it's gonna have multiple levels okay just like a tall skyscraper in a big city okay so we want to save some room towards the top to make the other levels so I'm gonna do a, a big rectangle right here it's gonna be really close to the bottom of the paper and it's going to go up but then it's going to you're going to save some room up here okay so I will demonstrate okay so I have my box and it, even after I told you to leave some room I kind of didn't leave myself quite as much room as I wanted so I'm going to erase that a little bit bear with me Okay, I want you to notice a few things here with my box. These two sides are parallel with each other and they are parallel with the side of the paper. So they go very straight up and down. Straight, 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 very vertical, okay? And then these lines, they this line is parallel with this line and is parallel with the horizon line and is parallel with the edge of the paper down here and up and up top, okay? And, you know, I did guess, so it's probably not perfect. But these lines are also perpendicular. So if everything's parallel like this, then um, hopefully I also have these lines being perpendicular. That means that they meet at a 90 degree angle, okay? All right, now the next step is that we don't, we don't actually need this horizon line that's inside the box. It's kind of important that as we discover lines that we don't need, that we erase them pretty soon because if we don't erase the lines that we don't need then they start to kind of clog up our drawing and uh, get confusing and we start to lose track of what we're supposed to be looking at okay and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from this corner to the vanishing point to draw a line okay and I don't actually need to go the entire distance I do need to go a fair ways with my line but I but the main thing is, is I want to make sure that it lines up with the vanishing point, okay? So I'm going to stop right there. If I end up not making these lines long enough, or if I make them too long, I can still adjust that, okay? I can make them longer or shorter. Now, I'm going to make the back edge of this box. So this is the front edge of the box, the front edge of the box, front side of the box. This is the side um, um, surface of the box. 
and then I'm going to make the back edge of the box. Okay, and this is parallel, this line is parallel with this line, okay? So you can look and compare those two lines with each other. And then I just erase that little bit of extra line that I had. I can also erase this line in the middle. It's part of the horizon line. It, it, it exists back there, but it's behind the box now, so I can't see it, okay? So we could actually make this into a building just like it is. This could be a building. But like I said, we're going to make a multi-tiered, multi-leveled building, okay? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to place another box on top of this, or another box on top of this box. So I'm going to start by, and I can make it smaller, or I can make it the same size. If I make it the same size, I should have just made the first one bigger. But I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to put another box, just like I started the first one. I'm going to go up a little ways. I want to give this several layers, I think, so I'm going to not make them too tall. And then I'm going to make this line. And then I wonder if you know what to do next. That's right. You go from this corner to that vanishing point. But I don't have to go the entire distance. And then I'm going to make the back edge of the building again. I'm going to repeat myself a lot. Um, so again, all these lines are parallel with each other, or very, very close to it. They're parallel. They're not in the same position, but they're all running in the same exact direction. I'm gonna make another layer, and I'm gonna kinda go up until I get to the top of the page, okay? So I'm gonna keep making different levels go up and up. And you can be creative with how this looks a little bit. Um, there's different choices you can make, little variations in the sizes and lengths of lines and the position of lines, but there's just a few rules that you do have to pay attention to. And those are the ones that I've been saying already. Having lines be parallel, 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 and making sure that the appropriate lines go back to the vanishing point. So some of you might be thinking, that you can just copy this line and that this line and the one that you make up here are going to be parallel with each other. And that's not actually the case on the drawing. In real life, with this building, this made up building, these lines would be parallel in real life. But in the drawing, they meet up at the vanishing point. So that means they're not parallel because these two lines would meet up at the vanishing point. And I do have to make sure that I go to the vanishing point. So those are the rules that you have to obey. These other lines, though, these are parallel with the ones around them. Okay? So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make another layer. Maybe I'll make this one taller. And what do I do next? It's that corner. To that vanishing point. Okay, so I think that that's going to be the basic shape of the building that I create. But now I want it, I want it to actually look like a building, so I need to decorate it with some stuff, like windows and doors and, and anything else I can think of too, okay? So, windows. Windows on this side of the building are going to be just like normal windows. I mean, they're just going to be rectangles. And you can put them in the arrangement that you think makes the most sense. Doors, too, going to be rectangles. And then you can add details to it. But let's say that this is a really, really big building, and so the doors are going to be small, because the people are going to appear to be small. 
because the building is so big. And the door, it's going to be it's going to be not very tall, but it's going to be really wide. Like it's one of those doors where a lot of people can go in at once. So again, I just have to make sure that certain lines are parallel. This line is parallel with this line. These lines are parallel with this one. See, they all are parallel together, okay? And then, you know, I can add some decorations if I want to. I'm gonna treat this sort of like, maybe like a sliding door or something, okay? Um, there's more I could do to that for sure, and maybe I will, but I'm gonna go on to making the windows be where I want them to be, okay? So, putting windows on this side, like I said, it's just, they're just rectangles. But the way I can do that is I can do several windows at once so that they all line up with each other. So I'm going to make one big rectangle. And I got to make sure that the lines are parallel with the appropriate lines. Okay, so I'm going to make a big rectangle. And in this big rectangle, there's going to be a lot of smaller rectangles, kind of like a grid. Okay, so one big square rectangle in there. And now I'm going to make these columns. I'm going to make one wide one and then one skinny one. That's how I'm going to do it. Windows come in all shapes and uh, sizes. We're going to stick with rectangle um, shape windows, but the arrangement of lots of windows together could be different, like the details of how they work. So I'm going to do one wide and one skinny. And I'm going to try to keep it even. So I'm going to keep that pattern pretty close to exact. I'm not going to measure anything, I'm just going to guess really well. And all the while, I'm making sure that these lines are parallel. Okay, so now I got these columns. One wide one, one skinny one. They're not perfectly even. I kind of had to mess with it a little bit to try to make it look even. That's okay, no big deal. Um, now, I could leave it like that. That sort of looks like a big office building set of windows right there to me. Um, I can erase this line in the middle to separate the different columns if I would like, or that line can remain and become part of the detailing of the architecture as part of that building. Because you're basically the designer of this building. There's lots of freedom in the details, but the place where there's not very much freedom is when you're trying to obey the rules of one point perspective. So if I want, I could, I could do horizontal lines across too to separate these windows out. Um, maybe I'll do that, maybe I won't, I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna go on to this side, okay? So that we can kind of see how these windows can take place on the side where these two lines are converging towards the vanishing point. So we're going to see what that looks like, okay? The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have this one big rectangle again. It's going to kind of match what the front side did. Because it's on the side, these lines will appear to be closer to the side of the building right there. There won't be such a big space. And then the top and the bottom of this big rectangle, so it's a big rectangle on the front, but on the side it's going to be a rectangle that's tilted away from us. So the top, just like the top part of the building, it goes down towards the vanishing point. So this line just comes down, it's lined up with the vanishing point down here. I wasn't showing you very well. Started up here at the corner, the other side's lined up at the vanishing point, and this goes right here, okay? And then this side does the same, the bottom does the same. 
So I line up one side with the vanishing point and the other side with where I want to start the bottom of the window and come across. And so those two, that line goes up towards the vanishing point and this line comes down towards the vanishing point. Okay, that's important because this is supposed to look like it's a rectangle that's tilted away from us. Now I can do the same thing. But um, these columns are going to appear to be skinnier than they are over here because they're tilted away from us. They're angled away. Okay, so over on the side, I'll zoom in so you can see what I did here. Because it's tilted away from us, the further away these lines get, the closer they get to each other, the closer they appear to get to each other. And so I st you start to kind of lose track with which line is supposed to be skinny and which one is supposed to be a little bit wider. And that's okay. I think that, you know, when things get far away and they're tilted away from us, we're not going to see all those details super clearly. As long as these lines are straight, I think it'll be okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this up here just so you can see what it looks like on one of the levels that is completely above the horizon line. Because right here we did these windows and they're kind of in the middle of the horizon line. So the bottom of the windows look like they're going up and the top of the windows look like they're going down. But up here, when everything's above the horizon line, it's going to be different. Um, you're looking up at everything, and so these lines are both the top and the bottom are going to appear to go down towards the point. Okay, so I'm going to start with a big, a, a rectangle again, um, and I also I also won't even see probably the bottom line of that set of windows. So it'll be a rectangle, but with the bottom not visible. And the reason for that is because this section of the building is probably going to block it off from our view. We're looking up at it, and then we just can't see that because this part of the building is in our way from being able to see it. The top of this set of windows is going to lead down towards the vanishing point again. Okay, and then I'm just going to make my windows again. I'm going to try to make sure I'm kind of copying what I'm seeing down here. Okay, so there I have those right there, and it kind of looks like the same thing that's going on down here. The way I would do this side is I would do it exactly like I see this side. I would make a rectangle it goes across like that then I do columns one wide and one skinny and I can do that for all the levels but again there's different ways that you could go about this um, the rules are the same you have the sides being completely vertical and parallel with each other and then the top and bottom go to the vanishing point so but other than that there's different things you can do um, you can make the windows wider, skinnier, um, longer, shorter. It's really up to you. Um, you could make different types of windows in the, in the building. I mean, this is your building. You're designing it, okay? I'm going to just show you how I might split these up so that they look like different windows right here, okay? I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to decide how tall I want these built these windows to be. I'm going to say like right there, like that. And on each window, I'm just going to go through with my ruler and make a little line. I'm going to not do the skinny section that's blanked out that I erased. And then I'm going to do a skinny section because that's what I'm deciding to do. I didn't. I wouldn't have to. I could just go on and make more windows just like that all the way up but I'm going to decide to do a little skinny section okay so I have to make a choice 
you know, I decided on this thickness or this length height for the windows and I went up and then the last one is a bit short. So I'm just going to say, hey, that's a, that's a design element. The, uh, the last, the top windows on that are supposed to be that short. But if I was really planning it out, I might, you know, divide up the space evenly so I could figure out how tall I wanted the, the windows to be. But I'm just going to leave it like that. I can also erase these little segments if I'd like. Or I can leave them. They can be a design feature in it, okay? It can be a little detail. I think I'm just going to leave them. Then I would do the same exact thing over here on the side of this of the, of the building right here. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm going to be lining up these lines where I start on this side. The side of where I start it over here is going to match up with this. I'll show you what I mean. Not explaining that super well, but I'm. I'm going to pretend that this line comes through, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Pretending this line comes through, and so I'm going to kind of start right there on the corner of the building, so it's going to be even with the front side of the building, and I'm going to start my line that way. It's going to get a little bit more confusing because these lines are so close together like hard to see where some of them are supposed to be. That's okay. Like I said, when you're looking at the side of something, and especially when it gets far away and appears to be smaller, it just kind of gets hard to distinguish what's going on with it a little bit. Okay, so I got all the rows now on the side of the building and notice that depending on its position um, it's either going leading upwards or it's leading downwards or it's straight across so like this one that's right in the middle of the horizon line is going pretty much straight across to it the ones that are below the horizon line are leading up towards it and the ones above the horizon line are leading down towards it that's because this horizon line represents um, our eye line. It represents where our eyes are when we're looking at this scene. Everything above our eyes or above our head, we're looking up at it. And everything below our, the horizon line is, a below, is, a, is below our eyes, and so we're looking down at it. So that means in this scene that I've done so far, it kind of looks like I'm up kind of high because these doors are really low. So that means I must be up on something that's high looking at this building. I should continue decorating this building with some windows on these different levels, um, all the time obeying the rules of one point perspective. Everything on the side of the building should be having the top and bottom of things go down towards the vanishing point. So when I make these cross lines on this, on this set of windows, they should all go down towards the vanishing point. When I do them up here, they should all go down towards the vanishing point. And the angle gets steeper and steeper and steeper, more and more angled, the higher up you go away from the horizon line because that means we're looking way up at something. Over here, you don't have to use the vanishing point. It's just normal rectangles, okay? All right, I'm gonna stop this video demonstration, but what I would like you to do is I would like you to follow along with what I've done. You might have to re-watch the video, and I want you to try and obey the rules of one point perspective. I want you to make a building that's multi-tiered, multi-leveled, like this, where all the lines are going to the correct spot, which is the vanishing point, or they're going completely vertical and parallel with each other, or they're going completely horizontal and parallel with each other. And then I want you to decorate it with um, some details that you come up with. Doors, windows, bricks. 
um, bricks are going to be the same. Um, just like windows, the top and bottom of the bricks, the, the rows, will lead towards the vanishing point. The lines that go vertical will still go vertical, but the lines that are horizontal, they'll lead down towards the vanishing point. Okay, and you guys can feel free to send me progress shots and ask me questions about if it's um, done correctly so that you don't have to go to all the work just to hear that it's not correct. You can show me a progress shot if you'd like and I can try to give you some feedback. When you turn this in, I would like you to turn it in only to the Google class. Um, try not to email it to me. I know I was doing that before, but I'd rather not have a bunch of work emailed to me because it kind of just ends up in lots of different places. I have, I have assignments from people that are artwork attachment or um, email attachments. I have Google Docs with artworks in them. I have artworks from the Google class and I have the artworks that came in the bus mail and it kind of just all gets really hard to manage all of that. So if you can post it to the Google class and if you can't for whatever reason you can send it in the bus mail. Um, but try to send it as a picture in the Google class. Okay, good luck you guys on doing this and um, I will come at you with another video soon. Bye.